Welcome back, internet friends. I have been investing and purchasing physical precious metals since 2012. That's eight years of experience buying and selling precious metals. And today, I would like to give you the seven most important things that I have learned about precious metals investing over these eight years. First of all, I have to say this is just for entertainment. Don't take any of this as real financial advice. This is just me giving you my opinion and what I've done with my precious metals investing. Number one, patience is absolutely key. The world is full of foolish gamblers and they will not do as well as the patient investors. Charlie Munger. You don't want to buy a bunch of bricks of silver with money that you're going to need next week. It's a good idea to buy on dips, but to buy with a long-term plan in mind. Don't expect to make a trade with your metals in one or two weeks if you're just getting into them. Accumulate precious metals when the prices are low and when there's dips. Don't buy all at once. It's also excellent to accumulate precious metals if you're a youngster. I started when I was 24 years old because I saw some video that actually was a terrible time to buy silver. It was like $30 an ounce the first time I bought my 2012 Silver Eagles. But over the last eight years, silver has gone down and I've actually accumulated in and now the price is rising again and I'm about even because all the silver I purchased in the early years, if you keep cost averaging in, the silver you buy at the bottom will nullify the gains you lost at the top. But it's a many year long process. You're almost a collector of precious metals rather than a quick trader because you hold them for so long. You always want to remember the trend is your friend until the end. I didn't know that at the beginning. So I kept buying down and down and down as the price fell. If I had known to wait till the trend had ended and then started the new bull trend, which happened, I believe in 2016, that would have been the best thing to do. So the trend is your friend until the end and be patient and don't buy all at once. Cost average in. Number two, divisibility is another key. It's important to have some forms of divisible metals. I like to collect all sizes of silver. I have 100 ounce bars, five ounce rounds, 10 ounce bars, numismatic coins as well, semi-numismatics from all around the world. I like junk silver. I just love silver, so I have many denominations of it. This way, when the price goes up to an all-time high, I wanna be able to sell off small amounts of my silver stash don't want to sell it all at once. For example, I had two ounces of rhodium and I just sold them. You can watch that experience in this video here. But if I had had one five ounce rhodium bar, it would have been more difficult to sell, but I also would have had to sell all at once. Now I had two one ounce bars, which I wish I had more, but just having at least two of something allowed me to sell once at one point, which was not the top, when the price was around eight and a half grand, I sold. And then again, when the price was over $12,000, much closer to the top, I sold. So having two pieces helped me get closer to the top. Just like you want to buy in gradually, you eventually, when things hit all time highs, want to sell out small portions gradually. For this reason, when it comes to gold, I like to get half ounce coins. I don't like to get one ounce because that's like $1,700 right now. In the future, let's say gold does go to $5,000 an ounce. I want to be able to sell small portions of it as the price is rising rather than sell all at once. And then the price continues to rally after I've sold my big gold bar. So having divisibility is good. The reason I choose half ounce rounds instead of quarter ounce or 10th is because the more divisible you get the coin, the higher premium you pay. For example, I paid about $800 for half ounce 2020 Golden Eagles when this dip happened. That's a pretty high premium, but the price on quarter ounce Eagles has a higher premium and so on and so forth. Some of the 10th ounce gold coins will be real small gold coin, but you're paying a high premium, like $2,000 an ounce. You pay about a 25% premium on those small portions. So a half ounce coin, you have that break where you do pay a little bit more than if you bought a full ounce, but you still have a nice chunk of gold that is more divisible than a full ounce. Number three, pay close attention to that one time when the Fed does accumulate lots of gold. This I believe was in late 2016 
When the price of gold was right under a thousand dollars, the Federal Reserve bought a ton of it. So when the Fed is going all in on gold, you should probably get some at that point too. That might be a good sign that it's close to a bottom. The good thing about precious metals is because the trends are nice and long and span several years mostly, you don't have to pay attention to every single day's news in precious metals, like you would penny stocks or if you're trading options. You don't have to follow everything with precious metals. But once in a while, I definitely like to check out the Kitco news videos. Those are on YouTube and they're very entertaining. This beautiful girl, Jennifer, interviews all sorts of mining CEOs. Watching the Kitco videos is a great way to get uh, your thumb on the pulse of the market when you do wanna know something about a precious metals market. When things are moving really fast, like Rhodium did, you do wanna get hungry for information though. The knowledge you can get from those Kitco videos about mining issues, about supply and demand issues, dealers, you can find out so much relevant information and sometimes when prices are hitting all-time highs, it helps to know that so that you can know when to exit. I learned from Kitco originally that the Fed was dumping into gold a few years ago and I bought some then too. Number four, I'm gonna tell you some things that drive precious metals investments. Now, gold and silver are usually pumped up by fear. Fear, especially for inflation and especially war. Things like the Fed's new policy of unended quantitative easing, creating $185 billion a day to buy up assets, everything from student loans to stocks and bad mortgage debt. Asset-backed securities are basically a combination of various types of debt lumped together. Debt like student loans, credit card debt, bad mortgage debt, auto loans, etc. That kind of news is good for gold because people fear inflation will come after that. Other news, like when a missile strike happens from Iran, that kind of thing will also make gold spike on a day. When people think war is coming, they like to get into gold. And when people are afraid of inflation, they like to get into gold. Now silver trades like gold, except a little bit more volatile. If gold goes up 5%, silver could go up seven. That kind of case is rare, but it does happen. Same thing where if gold crashes 3%, silver could crash seven. Silver kind of trades like gold's volatile neighbor. Right now, the ratio of gold to silver is 124 pieces of silver to buy one piece of gold. That's historically insane. From what I know, silver is mined out of the ground. Its abundance in the Earth's crust is about 11 to 1 ounces of gold. So that's just interesting for you to know. And also, don't get too caught up in the paper price of silver with the SLV GLD because if you do acquire numismatic coins, they will retain value. And oftentimes, when the price of silver and gold crashes through the floor, people buy up so much physical that the premiums are high and no one will sell it to you for the low price that you're finding the stock market on your phone says of SLV. For example, right now, almost all the dealers are out of 100 ounce bars of silver and they're pricing them at close to $1,800 but the price of silver is $1,469. Don't get too scared when the price of gold and silver drop through the floor because your physical will maintain some of its value. Especially like I said in semi-numismatic coins if you have like 2012 Chinese pandas is what I have a lot of those keep their value as a collectible item. Things that make platinum palladium and rhodium go up are kind of like the opposite of gold and silver. Platinum, palladium, and rhodium are used in industrial manufacturing and 80% of it is in auto manufacturing, catalytic converters. So when times are good, people like to buy cars and they're buying lots of vehicles. That drives demand for manufacturers to make cars and they put rhodium and platinum and palladium in those cars and that is a type of material that is not super abundant on the earth. So when it's a high demand, the supply can dry up real quick. But when things slow down, like we just had a major crash in the markets and billions of people across the world are not working or driving or buying vehicles this next couple months because of COVID-19. So months like this are when auto demand is fallen and so will the price of rhodium, platinum, and palladium because their industrial demand is no longer as necessary. So gold and silver usually do well when times are tough. The other platinum metals usually do well when times are 
excellent and even the platinum metals still retain their value through tough times. For example, the last time gold was at its all-time high of near 1900, platinum was worth even more. It was worth 2000. Currently, palladium is worth over 2000 still. So they still retain a lot of value. When I first got into precious metals, for example, palladium was only $500. And that gets me into my next point. Number six is diversity. If you're gonna buy precious metals, it's a good idea to accumulate all of them. Just the main four or five, like silver, gold, palladium, platinum, rhodium. And you can accumulate these at different times. You don't wanna buy them all at the same time. Because for example, while gold is rocketing up right now, platinum is actually an excellent deal under $800. So now is a great time to accumulate something like platinum maybe instead of gold, or silver is at a higher ratio. I would be accumulating all the metals because we're looking at some crazy money printing going forward, but having all of them, it's like having the infinity stones of precious metals investing. You have rhodium, it goes up tenfold and gives you a huge gain, but it only happens once every 10 years. You have gold that moves with fear. You have silver, which moves with fear, but is also industrial. You have platinum, which goes up when things are excellent. And you have palladium, which is just a wild card that went up so much because of demand. You want to have that whole fist, the Thanos glove of precious metals, so that you can have different options at different times in your life. Precious metals investing is a collecting passion that stays in your heart for decades, because it takes many, many years to see the real fruits come from your investing of precious metals. That's where patience, again, is so important. Finally, number seven, pick your dealers and pick your coins carefully. I have had great success and done excellent business with the following, Kitco, Atmex, Provident Metals, and SD Bullion. I've also had a great experience with Liberty Coin, a local dealer here. I can vouch for them, but it's important you keep your receipts and you can always take your metals that you've ordered online to a local jewelry store or a local pawn shop and they will most likely have this sigma scale device that can verify for certain that your metals are what they are supposed to be i've heard of people getting swiss bars that were not authentic you know so you want to know for sure if you put thousands of dollars into a little coin that you definitely got the right material in that coin that you paid for so keep your receipts and it's a good idea to get your coins verified a few things that i love to acquire that I think are safe. I like getting Royal Canadian Mint 100 ounce bars and I like getting semi-numismatic coins from the Perth Mint. They make a beautiful animal series that has kookaburras and they'll do a different lunar series like each year is a different animal and they're just beautiful designs. I used to accumulate Chinese pandas but after a certain year they lowered the amount of silver within the panda by like half a gram and I just wasn't happy with that and I have so many pandas already. But one problem with silver is if you get too in love with it, you will have nowhere to store it because it does take up a lot of space. Once you get in the tens of thousands of dollars of silver, you start having barrels of the stuff. That's why it's also a good idea to diversify. You can have large amounts of wealth in like platinum, rhodium, or gold and then you can have you know, a good chunk of wealth, but not so much that it's bursting your door open of silver. Another coin I really love, these America the Beautiful series that the US government mints, they mint each quarter design in a five ounce round. They only mint so many, like between 10 and 30,000 of each coin per year. The coins are collectible because some people like their home state or their hometown, or the coin didn't get that many minted a certain year, or some people are just trying to collect the whole set. Those maintain a little bit of extra premium into the future. But that's all the information for you I have about precious metals. If you like this video, found it helpful or informative, go ahead, smash the like button. Please feel free to drop me a comment. Tell me if you disagree with me or if you've learned some things yourself about gold, silver, and the other precious metals from investing. Go ahead and subscribe. I do make videos all the time. Good luck to you out there. I'll see you next time and have a wonderful day.